We'll begin with a much hyped cyber threat from China. The story exploded after U.S. security firm uh, Mondion released a report that traced a series of cyber attacks against the U.S. to a Chinese military unit. And China's defense minister says, uh, said that there's no proof that China is responsible for the attacks. But the White House has taken action and unveiled a new policy that puts sanctions on foreign countries that engage in online spying. Well, the whole ordeal has raised fear over the U.S.'s vulnerability to attacks from China. But beyond the cyber world, are we directing our attention to the right place? If you look at U.S. imports from China in 2011, we're talking $98.7 billion in electrical machinery and equipment, an 8.7 percent increase from the year before, and $94.9 billion in power generation equipment, and that is up by 14.7 percent. So just how technologically dependent is the U.S. on China? To discuss, Brian Dugan from the New America Foundation joins us now. Welcome, Brian. Hi. So China is the world's biggest exporter, and a lot of these gadgets end up right here in the U.S., uh, from smartphones to other electronics. So if people are worried about China spying on us, um, what about these products that we consume? How easily could they be bugged? Mm -hmm. um, so all these devices that, that we use every single day, uh, any of them could be bugged. And, you know, but that isn't just uh, a fact that is true about devices that, comes from, that come from China. That's true about devices that are manufactured any, anywhere in the world. And, in fact, we've had to deal with that in the U.S. Uh, in, the, in the past with, with our own carriers. Um, but the, 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 the thing that allows uh, the characteristic of these devices that allow uh, that type of surveillance and monitoring is their closed nature, is the fact that no one can see into them, no one can understand how they actually work inside. They're actually black boxes. But, and so that is true of almost every single cell phone that, that we use, no matter where it's manufactured. Uh, so that is the capability uh, that, uh, that any manufacturer has over any device that we use. And the reason that we're talking about this today is because politically, at this point, we're scared of what China could, could do with its power over its manufacturing. But the thing about these devices, in order for them to, uh, even if they contain what we call a backdoor, even if they contain a vulnerability or they're you know, full of malware or bugged, uh, they still have to operate on standardized networks. They still have to get on the internet. They still have to be able to make cell phone calls. And these are known. These communication methods are known. So the risk is, um, how soon, for any given device, will a security researcher, uh, you know, uh, explore what that device is doing or uh, dig into it a little bit, or how soon will someone try to use it on a corporate network? Right. So, well, yeah, and um, yeah, we have these new fears, and let's say this sounds scary to to an American, and Americans wanted to stop using Chinese products. That's easier said than done, right? It seems like everything's made in China these days. Um, how technologically dependent is the U.S. on China? Um, it's as dependent as uh, you know, as as long as you know, devices are, are manufactured in China and they're cheap enough for us to buy. Um, so you threw up some uh, some statistics earlier, and that indicate that you know China, that the U.S. is is very dependent. But you know, let, let, let's let's keep in mind that these devices still have to obey rules to to interoperate and be on networks. And it would be uh, you know it, it would be extraordinary for uh, for backdoors to be or you know malware to ship and for no one to notice because of uh, the the number of eyes that are looking on on any given device. Wow. Um, Want to talk about you know China is is under the microscope right now uh, for possibly being a cyber threat, but they're not the only ones involved in online spying, are they? No. So the, in order for the uh, for any you know, for any malware or spying to work on any of these on any any of these devices right now, it, let's say it came from China and there was a threat on it, it would have to uh, contact. Uh, machines or, uh, or, or or people um, some, somewhere else in the somewhere else in the world that would be very you know very very quickly d discovered. The way that you hide that is by uh, making it official, and that's what China attempted to do in 2006 by defining its own Wi-Fi encryption standard uh, that was not adopted by the, the rest of the world. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, you know, if uh, if if spying is going, if if electronic surveillance is going to be 
uh, par for the course for any state, for any corporation. Um, what are the rules that allow that to happen? Right now, China hasn't been able to get any rules on the on the global level in order to enable its its spying. Um, but there are other states that certainly have. Um, you know, so the United States, for example, uh, we not only have uh, laws and rules that allow us to uh, to to inspect and uh, gain access to citizens' data, um, but since those corporations that control data are based in the United States, and mm -hmm. many many people throughout the world, including Chinese, use American corporations' power over data, the United States has, through a combination of, of our surveillance laws, uh, has claimed the right not only just to inspect Americans' data, but also mm. data stored by foreign citizens wow. on, American, uh, on American data. So we're seeing uh, this is a very complicated issue. Um, very interesting discussion there. I appreciate you talking, coming sure. in and talking about it. That was Brian Dugan, a technologist at New America Foundation. Well, the reports of the Chinese military hacking U.S. trade secrets have been covered extensively by the mainstream media. Take a listen. China is officially out of control because don't look now, but proof today our sugar daddy is a thief. New report tonight lifts the veil on a kind of invisible war, China unleashing its full spy power. Let's return to the alleged link between China's military and a prolific hacking group. Most cyber attacks are being carried out by teams inside the Chinese military. But there's more to the technological relationship between the United States and China than hacking. Congressman Dana Rohrabacher, a Republican from California, explained it to RT. We have built uh, China into a major economic power uh, without demanding any type of political reforms. Uh, we've been given the most favored nation status, one-way free trade. We permitted them to steal our technology. Uh, they get away with murder. Of the latest show of China's economic power, purchasing bankrupt U.S. business, A123. A123 Systems is an electric car battery maker, and you may have heard of this business before. A123 received $249 million from the stimulus bill to refurbish two factories in Michigan. But despite this help from the government, the company is going bankrupt. Now, the taxpayer-funded technology company has a new owner, China. That's right. The China-based company, Wan Ziyang, purchased A123, and these factories will remain in Michigan, saving around 1,000 jobs. But the technology pioneered at MIT will now belong to the Chinese. So while the mainstream media may cover China stealing U.S. corporate secrets, it seems that they're mum on the times when China simply, buy, simply buys them.